I get confused when people say fight because I always think like, what are we fighting about? So is arguing and fighting the same thing? It becomes a fight with our intention. Am I angry? Am I, am I bringing vitriol into it? Or could I fully engage in like a debate? And somebody said something to me the other day that I want to share. It had a little bit to do with argument. Yeah. They have a new puppy dog. And the puppy dog like just chews oh on everything. Gosh. Yeah, it's the cutest thing. It's pretty cute. And it can also be, be overwhelming. And annoying. When it's like chewing on your feet and your ankles and you're like, I don't want to, I don't want my ankles chewed on. Thank you very much. Their daughter said something that was so fascinating. She goes, you know, are you angry or are you doing it out of a place of love? When you discipline the dog, it becomes abuse when you bring anger into it. This morning we were doing a TikTok live and we were chatting with this guy who said, you know, it's about compromise. And compromise to me is a word that I have to be careful with because generally I always looked at compromise as a negative, right? This is something could be better, but we're going to compromise and make it worse. And I've really shifted the way I see compromise. To me, compromise is actually something that I'm kind of excited about because, and I've used this example before here, but when I wanted to ride my bike around the world and you wanted to move to Kenya. Yeah. That could have been something that was difficult because I had been wanting to do this for years. It was this dream that I had had. And if I would tell somebody, you know, I, can't, I, I let that dream go. There would be like, oh, like you so, met a woman and you let this dream <laughs> go that you've had for a long time. That's not a negative. The positive is that I got to go live in Kenya for you know the better part of two years and that was an amazing experience. It's something that without you, I never would have done. Sure, that's a compromise. The compromise was in, like, now if it had been like, you know what, I want to stay in Northridge and we're going to keep our apartment in Northridge and we're going to keep commuting in traffic for an hour to the west side, you know, then that wouldn't have been a compromise. That would have been me giving something up, which is very different. But a compromise, and I think since I know since we're talking about arguments, I think it's one of these important things that that and why to us arguments tend to be small but also tend to actually bring rewards right and it brings a reward because if we're having an argument we're actually looking to find the solution and even if it's like you know what i don't really want to do that that's not my choice it's not what i really want to do i don't want to argue anymore my big shift has been i'm not going to just compromise and say fine we'll do it your way you know that I never do that. No, you do not. Instead, I have to say, you know what? Okay, let's do it your way and I'm going to choose it, which means I'm going in 500%. You know, if we had ended up putting our, you know, setting up in the front yard when our <laughs> friends came over, I would not be resentful. I would have been like, I am now choosing that. And I actually had a reason for why I wanted to be in the back. And had we been in the front and had the problems arisen from being in the front, um, which is that we actually have a nice, like not nice, it's in progress, but we have a, a patio in the back and we haven't yet built out our stone patio in the front. So we were going to have to bring chairs out onto soft ground. And I just Hasn't thought the way they would, in a while. I thought the way they would sink in, it would just be like, and the things that would be uneven. We didn't actually have enough. There were a lot of reasons. Now, if we had just done that, we moved it out and maybe all of the chairs would have sunk in the ground an inch and it would have been dirty and it would have been a mess. I would have been able to like not be resentful of you. I'm like, I'm going to own that. I also chose to do that as well. Yeah, that was so important for me because I remember when I asked you if you we could move to Kenya, a friend of mine and she's a brilliant therapist. She was like, you have to make sure that he's not moving to Kenya for you. Otherwise, it's going to ruin your relationship. If he's compromising, not going on this like bike round around the world so he can move to Kenya with you, your relationship is not going to work. Yeah. And I was, there was a minute there where I was like so worried. I was like, oh my God, I am moving back home. I am moving to a country that is dear to me, that I know people. And for you, you'd never actually, you'd never even been to Africa. Nope. And so you are coming because I invited you. And, but then the way you chose, and we talked about it. Do you remember this oh, conversation? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we talked about it and you were like, no, I am not going to move 
for you. I'm going to move. You took it to a whole other level, you know, that I didn't feel like you were my responsibility when you moved to Kenya. Like you made, and yeah, and for sure, like I do speak the language. There were ways that I, I don't know, was your guide a little bit, mm-hmm. but I never felt that I was your responsibility. Well, not never, because at one point something happened. I forget what it was, but we had a, we, we ran into a, a snag of some sort and you went like, oh my God, this is going to, could hurt our relationship because this is my fault because it was my idea to come here and he didn't do this other thing to come here to be with me. And that never crossed my mind. But I totally get it. If I had been in your situation, yeah. I would have had the same reaction as you. I would have been like, oh, oh shoot. Like I have to take care of of her because this was my choice because she compromised. This wasn't her first choice. And I, it's like pretty much like a rule for me. If I'm going to do something that initially I didn't want to do, I'm going to choose it a hundred percent and basically tell myself, this is what I want. When did that become rule? For me? Yeah. Like when did I shift with that? Yeah. Uh, It was um, a little bit before we met. You know, it's when I realized that the only time that I would, the times when I was resentful is when I did things uh, that I didn't want to do mm. um, and that it would also be just as easy to decide to want to do that. You know, like really, if it's like, let's go have Chinese food or let's go have have a Japanese food and we could have an argument, Chinese or Japanese food, right? And I could be like, and then we could go have Chinese food and the Chinese food's greasy and gross and I'd be like, oh, see, now I'm really angry mm-hmm. with you and I can double down. Like, life is so long and... You can have Chinese food next can, time. <laughs> they, right, or Japanese, right, exactly. But you get oh. kind of the point. It's like that it doesn't, is that, you know, and even if it all like goes down the shitter, that's totally okay. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is perfectly all right for things because I'm going to make choices that are also going to, sometimes they're going to stumble and be a disaster and sometimes you will. And you know what? If we're actually, if I'm not trying to keep score, you actually don't want disaster after disaster. No. So if we keep saying, you know what, you're, we're doing it your way and we're not doing it my way and it's disaster after disaster, at some point you're going to say, you know what, every time I make a choice, <laughs> it's a disaster. Let's do it your way. And I say, great, now I just won. I might have lost a few battles, but I completely won the war. Actually, I think <laughs> it's, there is like less when you like, I agree to do it your way. Then I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I, you know, if, it, I, if pressure's off, right? Pressure's off. If yeah. something goes wrong, wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So let's say like, you know, so arguments, I think I want to, let's kind of like come back to, because arguments I think are normal. And somebody said something to me the other day that I want to share and had a little bit to do with argument. Yeah. Um, they, they have a new puppy dog and the puppy dog like just chews oh on everything. Gosh. Yeah, it's the cutest thing. It's pretty cute, and it can also be, be overwhelming and annoying when it's like chewing on your feet and your ankles, and you're like, I don't want, to, <laughs> I don't want my ankles chewed on. Thank you very much. And because I was in someone else's house, it's not really that frustrating to me. It's like pretty minor. I think if I was the owner, I would feel a little bit more. And their daughter said something that was so fascinating. She goes, you know. When you, when you discipline the dog, it becomes abuse when you bring anger into it. So you can actually scold the dog. You can, I mean, she didn't say you can beat the dog, but like, but you can, you can actually be really firm with the dog. It's your, are you angry or are you doing it out of a place of love? And I think that's what comes up in, in arguments with couples is that we get to the point where we're angry and we can't actually express ourselves with a certain firmness or calmness, or this is just really what's important to me. Maybe it's like, well, why, right? And that's a big one that I hear a lot of times, right? Like, why is that important? Well, it just is sometimes, and that can be totally okay. Sometimes I have a reason. Sometimes my reason might not be good enough for you, whatever. But if we're going to get into it, can we actually, it kind of goes from this point of, you asked earlier at the beginning, is it a fight or is it an argument? It becomes a fight with our intention. Am I angry? Am I, am I bringing vitriol into it? Or could I fully engage in like a debate or a, or even an argument can be okay. But when that energy shifts into 
like anger, resentment or whatever, then it devolves into something that <coughs> that is unhealthy in the long term sort of, you know, yeah, a long term health of the relationship. I so agree. I think when you even when it's something that you really want and believe when it's and just coming at it without having like the emotional baggage of it and just expressing yourself like why is this so important to me in a moment of argument rather than just like having your emotional speak you know like just letting your emotions be like the thing that's dictating the way you're speaking you know or anger or wanting to win i think that is when it becomes like such an argument right you know yeah but also like knowing i think that is the thing that i'm learning is like knowing when something is really important to me mm-hmm. and i wanted like i really want it sometimes we like like you know what i not that important it's not that yeah. important it's like all like for an example if we're out and you're getting really hungry and you're like, I really want Indian food. Oh my God. Then I, we have to have Indian food. I cannot change my mind if I am extremely hungry and I've just like set my mind to what I want to eat. I'm just like, if it's Mexican food, I want Mexican food. And it's almost becomes like as, a, as an obsession. So next time, yeah. what, what were you going to say? No, no, go ahead. Keep going. I feel like that is the one where it's just like, I literally let my hunger dictate. Like, I'm just like, I'm just looking like I, it's, it's like one vision tunnel. Yeah. Right. And that just got to be like, okay. And then I'll have to kind of like, well, and, and this is actually where I find in an argument very often, almost the most we argue is when I want to please you, but pleasing you is going to be really, really difficult or impossible. And then I get a little frustrated with myself. So let's take this example of needing Indian food. Say we really want Indian food, but we are in a place where there just is no Indian food restaurant open. And so we're we really hungry and we're driving an around. <laughs> and then, like, I want to please you, but, uh, and now I'm going to get resentful or angry because there is no Indian food. And I'm trying to find it, but it's really far and I don't want to drive a half an hour out of the way to get Indian food when there's perfectly good Mexican food and Thai food and whatever else right here. And so I find that for me, when I get in in arguments with you is that it's actually that I want to please you and make you happy, but in doing so, it will be an enormous inconvenience or make me unhappy. And that is a conundrum that I think a lot of partners probably get into, which is I want to be there and please you, but it's too much to do that. So now I'm angry at you for wanting the thing that you want. Yeah. Right. And then I'm angry at myself for not being able to provide that for you. And the truth is like you actually can't, that is, you have to deal with that because there's, if you want to please me, that's really nice that you want to yeah. please me, but then you can't please me and then be annoyed with me. Oh, I can. For, I, <laughs> oh, you have, but I'm just I don't, know, I don't know how beneficial it is, but I can definitely do that. <laughs> but I'm not just saying that I am, that is not my fault. Like that is something for you to deal with. 100%. You know, so. Actually, who else listening in actually has that experience of part of my anger is that like I want to do a better job than I'm doing or the the tear between pleasing myself and pleasing you. That's a real thing for me. And in recognizing that, that helped me enormously be less annoyed. And, and it still comes up. It definitely comes up where I find myself getting annoyed because you're also asking me to do something that doesn't make sense. And one thing I could do would be like, you say, I, I want you to... I, I, what are you it. talking about? I'm asking you to do something that doesn't make sense. Everything I say makes sense. That's true. Just kidding. That's true. Uh, my bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can say a lot of things that don't make sense. Um, but it would be like, okay, I could basically... I, if I don't let my emotions get the better of it, I can be like, you know what? Doing it that way doesn't work for me. You know, I hear that's important to you, but doing it that way is not, doesn't really work for me. You know, maybe I'll do my best or, you know what, not this time. Or if it's really important to you that it's done that way, then I, then you need to do it that way, right? Without me being, then bringing the resent, resentment, like, fine, if you want to do it that way, just do it yourself. Because now you're defensive, I'm defensive, and now we built a, a chasm between us instead of, like, 
that's just not working for me. And like, I'll even do something else. I'll pick something else up, but doing that in that way, I'm not going to do. And it's all about the energy bringing to it. If I'm like, I'm not doing that. It's like, I'm not doing that. No way. Or I'm not doing that because that's just too much for me. Yeah. You know, or that just doesn't work for me or the way I understand it, it should be done this other way. And if you need to go ahead, but now as we like, as in a partnership, and in like really, we're, because we really want to be there for each other, that makes it more complex. If something's really, really important to me and you want to do it the opposite, that makes it a really difficult choice for you. I don't blame you for being frustrated. Like, ah, I'm now either going to make myself unhappy or I'm going to make you unhappy. And know that neither of those are really what I want to do in this relationship. Yeah. So, uh, as we are going through the holiday season and into January, uh, we'd love to hear your stories for how you work well together, either the challenges, like what I need help with, or the things that you found over time that actually help you move from the holiday months into January and staying strong, even taking maybe a hit or two, but getting back up stronger than it was before. What works, what doesn't. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts or watch your videos. And uh, and if you like what you see slash hear, make sure to give us a five star, a thumbs up and uh, share with your friends, whether they are interracial couples or not. All are welcome here. Yeah. So thank you for listening and we'll see you next week. I, wish, I think in December we should start wishing people happy holidays. Absolutely. You know, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah. <laughs> what other holidays? Hanukkah, Christmas, Christmas Kwanzaa. Um, um, whatever other holiday that you'd celebrate. Yeah. Uh, and whichever ones we miss that are really important, make sure to let us know. And next week, we'll, uh, we'll wish you a happy holiday. In the meantime, have a great one. Bye.